This morning, our speaker is practitioner Sandra Kupo. And I guess I could say a lot of things about Sandra, the practitioner, the facilitator, the trainer, the transformation coach, the cook, the, the baker, the friend, Sandra. You know that that is my Bessie. My Bessie, Wessie. Good morning, good morning, good morning, my spiritual family. Lord of mercy. My eye full of water. It is just so good to see all of you here this morning. I see old friends, I see new friends, I see some per persons that I don't know, but I, I'm looking forward to, to really getting to know. And I'm really very delighted and happy to be bringing the message this morning. So of course in Kingston, Jamaica, it is well not so sunny, but definitely warm and we have no snow. So I'm also welcoming all of those persons who are joining us, um, our, our fam family overseas on the internet. Now raise your hands if you brought a friend this morning. <laughs> Okay, raise your hands if you are a first time visitor brought by a friend. Okay, raise your hand if you are a member or a regular who was brought by a friend some time ago. I would say almost all of us. I can safely say that about 90% of my friends I met right here in this community. These are people with whom I share a deep, lasting, and loving friendship. We have laughed together, cried together, broken bread together, danced together, had fun together, played together, and done some serious reasoning together. Many of them have shared a starring role in some of my best memories and have enriched my life in profoundly meaningful ways. While a good, solid friendship can boost our happiness and even our health, what would happen to us if that friendship ended? A wise woman once said, Dear, if you give the key to your happiness to someone else, what happens if they go out of town? Who can tell me who said that? So we also create a link between money and happiness. Actress Joan Rivers, in talking about money and, and happiness, offered this sound advice. She said, people say that money is not the key to happiness. But I always figure that if you have enough money, you can always have a key made. <laughs> now, one of my favorite songs as a young, impressionable teenager was by a group called Mercy. And it's Love Can Make You Happy. Remember that song? Love, who, sing it with me. Okay. Love, let's start over. Love can make you happy if you have someone who shares. All right, all right, all right, enough of that. Because we know that is not so it work. But I believed it. I believed that having someone in my life um, a best friend or money at my disposal would make me happy. And it doesn't help that the media pushes and reinforces these ideas through the music, advertising, and commercial activity, and especially at this time of year when it's Valentine's Day. So this morning, I've entitled my encouragement, of course, Reverend John, John you started the encouragement idea. And we have now taken over calling the message the encouragement. So my encouragement is entitled, Living Happily Ever After Today. And I invite you to explore with me how we can experience authentic, self-generated happiness, regardless of situation or circumstance. Firstly, I want to establish the difference between joy and happiness. Did you know there's a difference? Spiritually speaking, 
happiness is a derivative of joy, which is one of the fruits of the spirit. It is that which we feel welling up from within the core of our being when we are completely aligned with, plugged into, tuned into or turned on to life. Happiness that arises from joy can happen anytime, anywhere. According to author and spiritual luminary, Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones, next to love, joy is the essence of the divine in its highest vibration as it moves through us. Happiness then can be thought of as the outer expression of joy, the horn by which authentic joy trumpets, spirit's presence in the human condition. End of that quote. Now, Science of Mind founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes said, states, happiness is a state of well-being or enjoyment of good of any kind. It generates inner peace and a consciousness of the goodness of God. It has a definite effect on mind, body, and affairs. We all have a right to any happiness of which we can conceive, provided that it hurts no one and is in keeping with the nature of progressive life. Consider how this little girl puts it. Her teacher gave her a class assignment, and one of the questions was, what do you want to be in life? She answered, happy. The teacher reprimanded her for not understanding the question. With wisdom beyond her years, the little girl responded, yes, miss. I do understand the question. It is you who doesn't understand life. <laughs> Friends, we all desire to be happy. Isn't that so? Indeed, the essence of joy manifesting as happiness is like sweet balm to every relationship. It is the infinite presence of God expressing through us in those moments when we most feel our unity with life and with one another. In this light, we could say that joy is the heartthrob of the infinite, pulsating in and through each of us when we feel a sense of connection to what matters and what is real. Consider that in those moments of feeling connected to the people and things that matter, we are also knowingly or unknowingly experiencing the deepest connection, the greatest relationship of all, our unity with God itself. True happiness then does not come from person, place, or thing, but as that which is generated from within. Happiness occurs from the inside out. So no matter how happy we feel when we spend time with friends and loved ones, consider that they are not the source of our happiness. They are but sparks to the flame that is forever burning within. Here's another way to look at it. Imagine that joy is like a well that exists deep within our being and which can never, ever run dry. External experiences, you know, seeing those bougainvillea that's lining the um, perimeter of this property. Look, you know, experiencing a child's gurgle and just having a wonderful, sweet life experience. These experiences enable us to dip into the well and it moves us from our head to our heart where the ineffable presence of God is so strongly felt, embodied and then objectified in our daily lives. It is the eternal fuel of happiness. So what can we do to consciously generate happiness? I have a friend who said, you can't just happy happy so for no reason. Well, this laughter is a good way to start. So Proverbs 17.22 tells us, A merry heart doeth good, like... It takes a doctor to know what it says. A merry heart doeth good, like... Medicine. Indeed, a good hearty laugh relieves physical tension and stress, relaxing muscles, and boosting our immune system. Laughter decreases stress hormones and increases immune cells and infection-fighting antibodies. 
thus improving resistance to disease. <laughs> now, my, my, my trainer who is in the room is going to not like me to say this. But, but did you know that one minute of laughing burns the same number of calories as six to 10 minutes on a treadmill? <laughs> So when I go to the gym next, I'm just going to laugh, right? And the laughter will take care of the calories, right? So joyfulness through laughter is the fastest way to create a positive emotional state of mind and establish a sense of connection with people who literally take pleasure in the company of each other. That's why we're all here this morning. It also feels good to laugh. Let's put it to the test. Now, I really couldn't resist this. There are two of them that I'll share this morning. So why was the horse so happy? Because he lived in a stable environment. Yeah, yeah I'll buy the drinks. And there is, there's a little one that's a little longer. So a police officer on traffic duty flags down a car. Sir. You appear to have 12 penguins in the back of your car. That's right, officer, I do. Well, that's ridiculous. Take them to the zoo right away. Okay, officer. And the car drives off. Next day, the same policeman in the same spot sees the, sees the same car drive past with the penguins in the back. He flags him down again. I thought I told you to take them to the zoo. Yes, officer, and it was great. So today I'm taking them to the cinema. <laughs> so I invite you to set your intention to laugh more. <laughs> no, you buy the drinks. Set your intention to laugh more. Spend time with a child or a toddler. Create a fun on date night with loved ones. Learn to laugh at yourself. Do more of what makes you laugh deeply and heartily. And just as laughter can lift you up, worry and negative thinking can pull you down. We often find ourselves torn by confusion, by conflict, by fear, suspicions, and judgments of people around us and anxious about conditions and circumstances. Isn't it reassuring to know that no matter what the emotional storm, there is that within us that has never been and will never be violated? We may stumble, but always there is the eternal voice forever whispering within our ear and singing in our heart. How can we access it? At the heart of this teaching, we call, um, sorry, let me say it again. At the heart of this teaching that we call the science of mind, we have an adage. Change your thinking, change your life. Conscious and mindful thinking with greater focus on our blessings rather than our limitations can serve to turn things around. Consider too that we have the power to change the story our narrative we have created around any circumstance. We decide what we make something mean. Knowing this, we can then move from, you know, when you have that glass with, that's halfway with water, we can move from, oh my God, I only have a half a glass of water, to, oh wow, we have a, a glass that's half full, to, wow, I have a glass. And so with a shift to a different way of thinking, we can switch on happiness as easy as switching on a light. Now gratitude is an attitude and way of living that has shown to have many benefits to our health, happiness, satisfaction with life, and the way we relate to others. Feeling and expressing gratitude shifts our mental focus and creates positive emotions. And these are emotions like joy and love and contentment, which research shows can undo the grip of ne negative emotions like anxiety. Fostering gratitude through optimistic, life-affirming thoughts helps to calm and soothe the part of the brain that sounds the stress alarm. 
Such affirmative thinking makes the body release more endorphins and happy hormones like dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. Other methods for boosting these hormones, apart from gratitude and laughter, are exercise, aromatherapy, and um, that three-letter unmentionable that will have our happy ho hormones lighting up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> The term, stop and smell the roses. Still figuring it out, right? It's all right, we can talk after the service. So we have to stop and smell the roses. And it may sound like a cliche, but it's sound advice for generating feelings of happiness. Appreciation is acknowledging meaningful moments like profound expressions of nature, like the Bogan Villa, the support of a friend, the touch of a lover, the gurgle of a baby. These deeply contribute to our overall state of well-being and happiness. I invite you to make a commitment today to tell a friend, a family member, or a business associate how much you value and appreciate them, and do it often. Let's begin that practice right now. Just turn to the person next to you and say, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So know that every utterance of genuine appreciation will not only feel good for those on the receiving end, it feels good, don't? It will flood your brain with good feelings that can have a profound effect on your life. Remember that happier people live longer, healthier lives. Being self-expressed is another surefire way to generate happiness. Self-expression is a display of individuality, whether it's through words, your creative writing, your style of dress, the way you wear your hair, or art forms such as painting, singing, dancing, and so on. Being self-expressed means that people will see your spirit and true character. They will see the totality of who you are. When we share our true self, that is the ultimate in generosity. And it is vital for peace, fulfillment, and yes, happiness. Pursue your passions voraciously. Share your truth authentically. Let your heart sing with whatever creative endeavor you have that is exclusively your own. Be as a child who is not yet tainted by the heaviness of life, having to do with worrying about what other people think. Just commit to honoring and expressing the unique individual that God put you on this planet to be with all your skills and talents and, yes, the warts. We need to smile more. <laughs> it's the beginning of laughter, and like laughter, smiling is contagious. I remember yesterday I went in to, to <clears throat> buy a lot of ticket. <laughs> and the lady behind the counter was kind of looking so. So I looked at her and I did this. And she bust a laugh, you see. And so it, 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 we can't help but smile. And it is one of the cheapest, easiest, and most rewarding and most sincere gifts that we can give to anyone that crosses our path, even the taxi driver. <laughs> I have to breathe for that one, right? <laughs> when you look at someone or see something even mildly pleasing, practice smiling. Instead of buying, um, burying our heads in our electronic devices, look up and smile at people more. Those you pass in the street, the person serving you in the restaurant, the gas station attendant, the lady that checks your, your groceries at the supermarket. And notice the effect in, on others. Because when, when we smile and so on, it's like, you know, the Christ in me is saluting the Christ in you. It's a, a version of Namaste. Now, a, a little story quickly. 
A couple Sundays ago, there was a group of us singing. Oh, before I say that, is that story. As a child, I used to walk to school, for prep school and high school, but we walked east. That means that we walked facing the sun. So from I was maybe eight years old, I walked with a squint. And so obviously, you know, my, my body responded to that squint by giving me frown lines. So come back now to the Sunday morning. And we sang. And after the singing, I was walking across back to my seat. And my beloved pastor said, <clears throat> I know when you're not pleased about things, you know, you, you wear your heart on your sleeve. You mustn't make people know your business, you know, and know you too well. And then I said, no, no, I'm fine. Hmm, but look at your face. And then I thought about my face, and I said, geez, I'm crying, and I did that immediately. <laughs> and I lifted the, the physiognomy. And I felt better. I wasn't upset. I wasn't feeling anything negative, but my face was in a frown. And so the first thing that people will see, apart from your dress and what you're wearing, is your face. So even though there might be nothing happening to smile at, just put a smile on anyway. It can make a world of difference. Right, Pastor? Yes. <laughs> and the last biggie here, which is perhaps the biggest biggie, is to develop that, in, that unquestionable trust in spirit. Psalm 144, 15 tells us, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. When we come to accept that God is that changeless intelligence in which we live and move and have our being, that it is our source of all good, that it is the supply of infinite abundance that we have at our disposal, that it is the sweet harmonies of songs that we sing and listen to, that it is the love that shines through the eyes of a loved one, that it is working for our absolute good no matter what the circumstances. When we come to know and trust that this presence is closer to us than our very breath, what else can we be but blissfully happy? As we grow in consciousness, this idea becomes easier to accept. And that acceptance opens doors of opportunity, infinite possibilities, a deep sense of inner peace, bountiful blessings, and harmony in the experience of every aspect of our lives. Friends, we were not sent here to endure. We came hardwired to be vessels through which the spirit of joy flows with grace and ease. Joy is an exquisite part of the package that is ours by divine birthright. We just have to name it and claim it. As we grow in consciousness and come to understand that, we set ourselves free to live from our bliss. A consistent prayer practice along with daily affirmations help to deepen our faith and expand our awareness of our oneness with God. So let's say it together. Today I am happy because I choose to be happy. Today I am happy because I choose to be happy. I let the spirit of joy express as happiness in my life now. I let the spirit of joy express as happiness in my life now. Um, there's a wonderful meditation that um, Dr. Holmes has in the back of the Science of Mind text, and it says, and I quote, there is a song upon my lips today. It sings of the glad heart and the happy ways of life. I will listen to my song for it carols for me the glad tidings of great joy, of love, of life. It tells me of the wondrous journey of the soul and the boundless life in which my life is hid. I am filled with joy. Let's say that together. I am filled with joy. Now I'm going to invite you to, we're going to do one last verse of our praise song. The four, if, if, if you're happy and you know it, do all four. What was the four again? Amen. Clap your hands, stomp your feet, say amen, and... All right, let's go again. So clap your hands, stomp your feet, snap your fingers, say amen. All right, maestro. If you're happy and you know it. All right, all right. If you're happy and you know it, do all four.
Living happily ever after is not exclusive to fairy tales. True happiness starts when you decide to be happy. Remember, we might not have control over what happens in life. However, we do have control of, over our mind and how we react to what happens. So let's make a conscious choice that today we'll be happy no matter what. May you know the depths of a joy so rich and meaningful that you can't help but share it with the world this day and every day. Namaste.